All right, Daniel Latham, I am now in the Battlefield District. Um, well, this has been a fun month. We have seen our community collectively lose its mind chasing strawman arguments like we are in a Nebraska cornfield. I have listened to our educators for the better part of two months tell all of us parents that their credentials trump our parental responsibilities, rights, and knowledge. Hitlerian book burning is not and never was an option or call to action, and it has become easier for all of you to argue this boogeyman than to address the very real concerns being raised by parents. I, nor any of the parents that I have spoken to, are interested in the destruction of books or censorship or banning of the titles in question. I do not endorse banning or censorship in any form. I believe these titles should be available in the public library and for sale that, so that parents who wish to expose their children to this material have that choice to do so. I don't believe that any written material should be banned or burned. But I also do not believe that all material should always be available to all people. Pornography is a legal medium, but I do not think that any of us think that it should be available at Chuck E. Cheese or the local daycare. The root of most of the issues that I have seen where the community and the schools are at odds all come back to one common cause. The more that a school system tries to enforce or teach a specific morality and value system to the children, the more issues you will have with parents. Our educators need to focus on reading, writing, math, science, and history. These are the things that we send our children to school to learn. I don't care what your values are. I don't care what you feel is right or wrong. I don't care what you think is moral or good. And I will not allow you to teach things to my children that I do not agree with, as I do not agree with most of your worldviews. Now, the great thing about this country is we don't have to agree. I don't have to condone your lifestyle. I don't have to think it's moral. You also don't have to agree with or think I have a moral worldview. The wonderful thing about freedom is that you get to live your life the way you see fit, and I get to do the same. What you do not get to do is teach my children that something that I view as immoral or wrong is right and good. What you do not get to do is contradict the moral and value system that I teach to my children. This is the issue that we are facing today. Half of the country does not agree with the accepted worldview of the Department of Education, and we will resist and actively work against any educator that chooses to teach worldview instead of primary education topics. These problems all go away if the school does not enter into morality arguments. I have listened to the arguments being offered in favor of the books, and the most common argument I am hearing is that this material is essential for explaining and introducing children to other lifestyles. While I can understand that argument and the want to broaden children's viewpoints, I would like to think that these communities can be explained without the use of graphic depictions of child abuse, exploitation, and rape. And if they cannot, I don't believe that they should be explained in schools. I have heard the argument that there is a process in place to remove questionable books. And this is also not the argument that's being made. The question is not how do we remove this graphic sexual material. The question is why is it there in the first place? How does it fall to the parents to individually vet the books in the school library and then go through the process to have them removed? The schools should not have let them there. They should have a process on the front end for taking books in and screening for material that is graphic or not age appropriate. And I have even heard the argument that I can put together a list of books that my child is not allowed to check out. This also does nothing to prevent children from browsing this material in the library on the shelves, and again, the parents should not be required to vet the library catalog. The schools are not responsible for teaching sexuality or gender theory to our children. My first grader last year should never have received a handout describing the 17 different types of family. The focus on these topics, as opposed to the basic educational subjects, is what has caused our standing in the world to plummet from a top five rank in all subjects 25 years ago to around 40th currently. These are our children. They are your students, but they are our children. You are not the parents, and you should not infringe upon the parental areas in these children's lives. Your degrees and tenure as teachers do not give you any more say over our children, and they are not valid rebuttals to our concerns as parents. We are the experts and are smarter than you. Didn't work for Terry McAuliffe, and it's not going to work for you guys. You will have to talk with us, and you will have to take our concerns into account, or this will only continue to escalate and build. I would like for our county to take the lead in being collaborative, as opposed to just following suit with the surrounding states and counties and filing charges. The ball is in the court of the teachers and administration. We are ready, and we are willing to have this conversation, but we are not going to be ignored or be silent. 